Hi guys, it's Keith Arkmerk Farms. It is the third week of November 2020. Thanksgiving's next Thursday. And we got a lot going on on the farm this week. So I'm a little late getting this video up. Um, starting to get everything turned over for winter. I'm also shooting a uh, microgreen video right now on uh, growing sun shoots. That'll be out next weekend for y'all to enjoy, and I will have that out on Tuesday because they should be done by Friday. We've also got our new building going in, which is all padded out and ready to go. We got all of the underground in. So there's our facilities. And we got drains, and we got sink wash drains, future restroom. That's all set up, ready for concrete. We're gonna be pouring that tomorrow. But today I just wanted to take you around and kind of show you what we do getting ready for winter, which it's like 60 degrees out here right now, maybe closer to 70, which it really shouldn't be. But we always have to be prepared because it's going to get cold and it gets cold quick here. Usually when it gets cold, it'll drop and it won't come back up. We're still in this little fluctuation mode. So it's been a lot more work with the tunnels and everything, but let me show you. So our main high tunnel, simple, automated side curtain. You wanna see how I did that? Check out the video, automated side curtain. Check out wiring option B, because that's the one that works best with the 24 volt trans, uh, what is it, converter? Yeah, whatever it is, to turn uh, AC power into DC. But yeah, check it out, works great. Now, for the rest of the farm, we're having to go through and vent all these tunnels manually as soon as the sun comes up because it gets hot in these things quick. With temperatures today, I've still got to get this side open. I opened up the top side, which at least let the heat out. Now I've got the same thing going on over with my other cat tunnel, the more of a permanent one. So I'm kind of considering moving it this year. I'm not exactly 100% sure if I'm going to or not because we are getting a farmer's friend tunnel and it's going to go over plot four all the way down. It's a full 90 foot long. So that'll leave this bed open. I might leave this here. I don't know. Maybe I'll move it over there into one. But on this one, same thing. Just open up the front. Now the one thing I've had to do a little bit more of this year, which I usually don't this time of year, is water. So I've shut down... Let's go over here to the irrigation header. I did shut down the irrigation header. Now for that, pretty simple. Since everything's on a header line, I left it up just in case we still needed it. Uh, turn off the main, unplug that from the hydrant over there, and then I turn on all of my timers, open up all of my valves, take off any end caps I have on, and let the whole system drain out. After that, I'm going to go through and then remove all these timers and take them inside for the winter. I find they do a lot better in a controlled environment over the winter. I just don't take as much damage and I don't have to worry about them breaking. Sometimes they do go a little wild and shoot out on me, but usually not that much. So now I'll take you over in the irrigation. Now, now throughout the farm right now, I still have a spaghetti line of irrigation hoses all over the place. There's one, and there's one, and there's more out here and more over there. I do not bother pulling these up in the winter. I've just found there's no reason to. Most of these drain out at the ends. There's a cap that drains, so I don't have to worry about them holding water in them. And even if they do, you don't really have to worry all that much about it because there's nothing compressing on the end, so it's not gonna pop it, and it's also plastic so it expands and contracts so we don't have to worry about that the one thing i do is come around to all my rainbird heads and i remove those which is usually just as simple as grabbing them by hand unscrew these take them inside for the winter that's for all my impacts unscrew take inside drip irrigation remains in place 
Now for my mega nets, they're all on stands with just a simple port hooking into them. So here's my mega nets, stand based sprinkler system. They just have a connection right here, which is nothing more than a push plug. So you just grab this and twist it till it pops, remove it, and pull it up out of the ground. Now with these, just take these and store them in the shed. And just stack up. I'll stack a whole bunch of these, take them in. Now I've got all my impact heads. Take all those, those will all go in bucket. So I know where they're all at. I'll be in the same exact place for next season. Then I went through, pulled all my stands that aren't in use. They all have my mega net heads on them. The other ones that are still in use, eh, you, well, you can kind of see them in there. I got mini wobblers on them, and I have those inside of the greenhouse right now. Those are actually proven to be really nice inside of there. Um, with my timers, took them all down, made sure they were drained, which was a good thing because there was still a little bit of water on top of some of them, and pulled all the batteries out. That way I don't have to worry about any of these batteries going bad over the winter and oxidizing and ruining a timer. I've actually had that happen before. And on top of that, these all these batteries get recycled into other things because I always start all my timers on a fresh battery at the beginning of the season. That way I don't have any problems throughout the season. They will last a season and about a half, but then mid-season sometimes you all of a sudden notice that your irrigation is not working. And that's because you have old batteries and then you lose crop over what a dollar and a half worth of batteries which is just not worth it now as for the field production it's pretty much all so done i've got some carrots over here still which i'm going to hand water those a couple times just to get the moisture levels back up before i start harvesting on them but i've also got a bunch of other crop i got some mustard greens i got some lettuce over there um Still got some tomatoes in the high tunnel that need to be dropped badly. They've actually fully died off. Stuff in tunnels continue to grow. Same thing with the big high tunnel. But for the lettuce, all this lettuce is pretty much done. It got frozen the other night. It got a lot colder than I anticipated. Which actually, it looks like the centers are still good, but the outer older leaves got hit the hardest. But I'm not going to worry about it anyways. If we need the production, we can pull it. Otherwise, I just leave it in the field because it will get frosted and get cold out here and it'll die. Same thing with the radishes and everything else. The way I figure it, I'm keeping the ground covered. I'm not really harboring any insects or anything because pretty much the insect pressure goes away after the first couple frosts. So I'll just leave it in the field. It leaves the soil living. It keeps, on, uh, keeps it good that way. Um, one thing I will do is once it dies, I will tarp it. At least I will try to tarp it as long as possible. Here we have such high winds that it makes tarping very, very difficult in the winter. I'll lay down tarp and then we'll have three days of 40 mile per hour winds and have sandbags every three or four feet all the way around. And that's what it ends up like every single time. As you can see, there's tarps and things everywhere from this last three days worth of wind we had. And also, you can get a lot of vole pressure that way. You can see all these holes in the ground. These are from voles underneath the tarps. The cats can't get to them if they're buried underneath the tarps. So, I mean, as the winter goes, I'll start to peel some of this stuff off and get ready for spring. But as for right now, we just leave everything in place and just kind of do it as we need to because it does not have to be done right away. There's a little chunk of glass in the field. That's not good. I must have came in with the compost. But either way. So, hope you all like what you saw here today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.